welcome back to Rabbit's Apollo 9 server. Um, I was going to show a minecart and, uh, and I guess circuit system that I put together to move items out of a mine up into uh, a storage area. Um, this is the, uh, the top of the storage area right now. We're at an elevation of about 103 and uh, you know it's pretty simple. It's just a mine shaft entry but uh, and obviously we could automate a lot more movement from up here but essentially what we have at the top is a large chest at the very top of a dropper pipe. Um, you can just see the, the top of the, uh, the dropper right there. And if we jump down into the mine itself, we find that we're now down at an elevation of 12. And there's the dropper pipe going, uh, going all the way back up to that chest. So let's start at the beginning here, show you how this works. Essentially, down here in our mining area, you've got the uh, the typical type of um, uh, of mine, right? We've got one long shaft, and then every four blocks we have another shaft going off of it. You know, looking for stuff down here. The way that this is going to work is that we're going to put stuff into the cart, into the chest in the cart, and the cart will come down here, and the first component is this loop for emptying the cart into the hoppers. You know, see you've got a set of hoppers here to, to do that with. The reason that I crammed five hoppers uh, together here is that every time the cart passes over I want five things to drop out of there rather than one thing. You know, if I've got, uh, if I've got 12 stacks of 64 items in there, I don't want it to have to make 12 times 64 passes to uh, uh, to, to drop everything off. You know, it'd be better if it was if we do 20% of those. And of course, if I'd added some more hoppers, we could have made it uh, even faster. But essentially, what's going to happen is the cart will come in on that track. It will cruise around here, drop off items into the hopper on each pass, and then this comparator connected to the detector rail right here is going to check to see if the cart is empty. If the cart is empty. Uh, this redstone torch will switch and what will happen is this track will actually switch so that now the cart can continue back the way that it came. And that's really important because I don't want to have to go back and get my cart every time uh, uh, every time it's done unloading. What I want to do is send the cart on its way, continue mining down here somewhere, and when I'm ready to drop off another load of stuff, have the cart be back there at the starting point. So. This detects whether the cart is empty. If it is, the rail switches and the cart returns. Now, the hoppers are connected to that massive dropper pipe. There's uh, what just about a hundred droppers in there, and you can see this tower of redstone uh, torches going up to power the droppers. The catch with a dropper is that once we've got something in this bottom dropper, uh, you have to keep supplying a redstone pulse to it to make everything, uh, to, to make the stuff in the dropper go, right? If you've got a stack of 64 uh, items in that uh, dropper, it's not going to send the whole stack up. Every time it gets a redstone activation, it's going to send one item up. Now, that could get really irritating if you were doing this just based with, a, a, say, like a, a button right here. We'd have to sit there and press it once for every single item in the dropper. So the solution is to build a clock circuit that will continue to, uh, to, to pulse and charge that, um, uh, charge that dropper pipe. This is the clock circuit over here. Ignore this one right here for now. Let's just look at this. And in fact, I think if I break this, yep, our clock circuit starts up. Okay? So you can see what's happening is that we're getting a, a pulse here. It's going through the repeat of these three repeaters, which are just enough of a delay but then when it sends the uh, then when it sends the pulse back over here, it uh, it actually you know, triggers that cycle going on. Uh, and of course, it's also triggering the redstone tower here to keep the droppers moving everything up. Now the catch is you don't want to have this just running indefinitely, right? It's going to cause some severe refresh problems because we've got uh, besides all the redstone flickering on and off, we've also got you know a hundred droppers that are moving. So you don't want to just let that go constantly. So that is actually hooked up to this little system. Again, ignore the lever for a moment. I'll explain that in a, in a second here. But essentially what's happening is that this comparator is checking to see if there's anything in the bottom dropper. If there is, then it's going to deactivate this redstone torch, which then of course 
allows the uh, clock circuit to run. Okay. So essentially, as long as there's something in this bottom dropper, the clock circuit continues to send uh, pulses at regular intervals, and the dropper pipe continues to push stuff up into the chest. Now, one final catch. What happens when we've got uh, the last item moved out of the bottom dropper and into the second one? Uh, the problem here is that all the way up that pipe, there are items that have not quite made the trip, right? Because uh, as soon as the last item leaves this dropper, the comparator sees that it's empty, reactivates uh, uh, this particular line, and the clock circuit stops running. So I've got a bunch of stuff clogging the pipe here. Basically, at the end of the day, when I'm done sending stuff up there, I can come over here to my lever, throw that. It basically hijacks the, uh, the little comparator circuit here and lets the clock circuit run. So now my pipe is active. And of course, when I hear all those clicks, that means that the, that the dropper pipe is empty, right? So then I know that that's cleaned out. So let's give it a try. Come back over here. And incidentally, the uh, three note blocks here, those are uh, attached to another detector rail. That's because once I send this on its way, I don't want to go and sit there and watch it, right? I might as well just climb the ladder myself if I'm going to do that. Instead, I want to keep mining down here or doing whatever I'm doing, and I'll know that my cart is back and ready for another, um, another run when I hear that cord go off from those note blocks. So let's put something in the mine cart we'll do is we'll just start out with uh, uh, 32 of those. Send it on its way. We'll come down here and have a look. There goes the minecart emptying stuff. And you can hear the dropper pipe starting up. And as soon as that minecart's empty, should be any pass now. Now my minecart is back there and ready for another run. You can see over here the clock circuit is still running, so obviously there's still something in that bottom pipe. Now it just stopped. That means that the bottom dropper is, is empty. But if we look up here, eventually we'll find this is the fifth one. Yep, there's the first of the stuff that's caught in the pipe, right? The, uh, the circuit went long enough to get the last piece of iron five up. So all I'm going to do is trigger the manual run. And now you're going to hear the clicks because there are obviously empty pipes already, or empty droppers already, right? There were four when that started up. And uh, in just a second here, that one will be all the way at the top. Click that off, and done. So basically, the, with the whole system, I can just sit here and keep mining up and down uh, different side shafts there send the, uh, the minecart on its way, and uh, when it comes back, I'm all ready to load it up again. So what we'll do here is, just for one last little demo, let's put the, la the last of the iron in there. We'll shove some coal in there as well, and some dirt, because there's not enough dirt up at ground level. We want to uh, you know bring some up from the subterranean area too. So let's send the minecart on its way. my dropper pipe. And while that's doing its thing, we'll make the big climb up there. Legs should be in awesome shape after this. This is also the part that makes me wish that we could get our elevator working without having it randomly crush people to death when they try to use it. I find that that's kind of a drawback to the whole redstone elevator thing, the random deaths. There we are. We'll take a quick look. Here comes all the stuff from below. Now, like I said, obviously up here, you know, we could uh, add some more automation, have uh, other hoppers pull the stuff out of here move it to permanent storage area or what. This is good enough for now, though, just testing out the concept. Of course, now I'll just go back down, and whenever it's uh, done transferring everything up there, 
we'll throw the switch and uh, the whole thing will be unloaded. So that's it. Clock circuit, dropper pipe, hopper system, and a comparator to determine whether to keep unloading or send the minecart back. And, uh, we're happily mining in a nice, efficient manner.